you know, there's a lot of exciting uh, Broadway reviews that happened in the past week. Uh, last week, Almost Famous got trounced, but as uh, I did think would happen, Kimberly Akimbo has gotten rave, rave, rave reviews. And those of you who are going with me in January really have something great to look forward to. And uh, I think you're going to enjoy it. One of the trends that's happened in, in recent 20 years is that musicians and actors often play their own instruments on stage. It's a very different kind of a musical story uh, when the actors are playing their own instruments, but it does create an interesting, um, uh, you know, as a perspective. This is once a scene uh, based upon a movie with a book by Tony Winner and a Walsh, the cast of actor musicians performs a celebration of life and love. And now please welcome Tony nominees Steve Kazee, Kristen Milioti, Elizabeth A. Davis, and the company of Once. Hi, uh, y'all. I wrote this song. For all of us here, it costs to live, you have to love. And I love her so, I wouldn't trade her for gold. I'm walking on moonbeams, and I was born with a silver spoon. And that was a sleeper and became the best musical. Kinky Boots, another musical based upon a movie. Harvey Firestein, uh, of course, writing this uh, based upon the movie. 
uh, about a shoe factory that's about to go out of business until they figure out that they need to, they could make shoes for drag queens. And uh, it's again, Harvey Firestein's uh, style uh, to talk about musicals and acceptance. Um, you know, it had really uh, a good heart behind it. Cindy Lauper uh, in a great upset, won a Tony award for this uh, for best score. And here we go. Sorry to disappoint, but we've only got the breath for one number. And we used it up on the walk out. But we'll let you enjoy our sparkly platforms and our fabulous spandex. I let out the seams. <laughs> we are wearing these fantastic boots to introduce a number from the high-heeled musical about an unlikely pair who join forces to save a shoe factory and find out they have more in common than they ever dreamed possible. As they work together to turn the factory around and be true to themselves, they discover that sometimes the best way to fit in is to stand out. Let's hear it for Kiki Boots! Yeah! Well, boss, is this what you had in mind? Yeah. Oh, I'm the old way, cause it's been done. We're getting ready for the new. Witness the future of price and sun. Oh, Papa's got a brand new shoe. I like a broken heel. Got you down. I got your solution. No longer are we making shoes, we are making two and a half feet of irresistible tubular sand. <laughs> so let's do it!
You know, and Billy Porter uh, is the lead. He won a Tony for this. If you were looking for uh, biographies of show business people, his biography was just fascinating. He came from uh, nothing in an impoverished background in Philadelphia, in Pittsburgh, rather. And uh, what people did for him, recognizing his talent is, is just amazing. Um, I like listening to biographies where the person is actually telling their own story. Uh, and I listened to it on a download from the library. It was really worth doing. I, I do recommend it. So um, after uh, that one, we had another movie uh, that came to life, uh, written by Sarah Bareilles about this woman. It's about women's rights and taking charge of one's life. Here it is. I first met Jenna, a small town waitress and expert pie maker, when I played her in the movie Waitress. She dreams her way out of an unhappy marriage when a baking contest in a nearby county offers the chance at a fresh start. I am so happy our film is now a romantic, funny, and uplifting musical that celebrates friendship and motherhood, not to mention the magic of a well-made pie. Nominated for Best Musical, here are Tony-nominated composer Sarah Borales, Tony nominees Jesse Mueller, Christopher Fitzgerald, and the company of Waitress. We've seen another car in copy of an old routine. Days keep coming, one out, one in all these same things. We're always opening up into a new day. Open to love, into a new day. One foot comes our way. Looking around and saying things. She's kind, she's lonely, 
An American in Paris um, was in the style of what the Gershwin organization had been supporting for 25 years, taking their music, setting it into a script and reintroducing people to what uh, the Gershwin music was all about. Christopher Wielden uh, from the New York Ballet uh, choreographed this. It was just a stunning uh, combination of ballet and Gershwin music. It got lots of attention uh, and was truly spectacular. Groundhog Day, another uh, movie that triggered a musical. It, it didn't run long. It was so clever uh, and well handled, very complicated staging. Um, I, I didn't understand why it just didn't run. It, it was something that really deserved uh, something better. Uh, and, you know, even Bill Murray went and saw it and thought it was fantastic. And of course, he was the original. <laughs> dance with 1005 weatherman phil connors five dollars so the bidding has begun at five dollars seven fifty ten dollars three hundred and thirty nine dollars and eighty eight cents miss you do understand you're not actually buying this person <laughs> <laughs> phil 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 phil, phil. Drove out of town, took a right onto a northbound highway. Was it really only yesterday? I've spent a lifetime seeking signs, reading lines, trying to forecast the future. Always staying a day ahead Well, that was the idea But I'm here I know now that I know 
I'm fine And I'm seeing you For the first time I'm alright And I'm seeing you For the first time Was beautiful storytelling then of course there was pretty woman andy carl again <laughs> he's really great uh he played rocky he was on law and order for a while uh he and his wife are kind of go-to broadway people and pretty woman was a lot of fun um not the greatest but a lot of fun you got that look you got that look it really shows it really shows crowd pleaser i mean it's not the greatest musical ever written but it sure was a lot of fun <laughs> excuse me tootsie was a brilliantly comic funny great script uh people didn't warm up to it the 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 cross-dressing thing uh just didn't play well and you know you're overcoming a famous movie uh i took many groups to this we loved it uh it's a shame it just didn't <laughs> Michael, what's your end game for all this? I mean, if the show is a hit, you're going to be Dorothy Michaels for a long time. Michael Dorsey is gone. Michael is not gone. I am Dorothy. Dorothy is me. It's coming out of me, Jeff. I'm experiencing these things. Listen to me. No, you're not. This show is making me a Broadway star. There are no limits. Dorothy can have it all. Play the great roles. Got that list I made. It didn't begin to dream big enough. Michael Dorsey, the man with a scheme and the master plan. <laughs> Couldn't beg, buy, or borrow his dream, but now Dorothy can. Cause she's got me flying like a bird. So how to describe it? Only one word, unstoppable. You're living in a fantasy, my friend. <laughs> no. <laughs> Stand aside, cause this girl's on a roll, she's unstoppable. Admiration, respect, and control, she's unstoppable. Half cocked and down on my knees, doors locked, but 
Control. We're getting big. We took the chance. We took this town. Told you before. Show me the door. I'll kick it down. When I put on the wig and the dress, I'm unflappable. You can't start to charge or the success. It's unmappable. Like the thrust of a hummingbird's tongue. Like a beer keg that's blown out its bung. Like a hippo protecting her young. Unstoppable. Unstoppable. Look how well cause this girl's on a roll. She's unstoppable. Admiration, respect, and control. She's unstoppable. Don't pursue unstoppable. No use trying to burst my balloon. Unpopable. No more waiting, cause this is my time. There's no mountain these heels can't climb. Nothing on earth can stop me, cause I'm unstoppable. The tour de force performance. I mean, he won a Tony. The music, the script won best script. Uh, it just didn't run. What a shame. Then there were the ego events that came along where uh, one woman show or one person show, Hugh Jackman did it, Elaine Stritch did it. Uh, it became a thing. This is a great sequence from Elaine Stritch live at Liberty. I got an opportunity to audition for the standby to Ethel Merman in Irving Berlin's new musical, Call Me Madam. It was to play the part of Pearl Mester, America's uh, ambassador to Lichtenburg. I was 20, I looked 40, I got the job. <laughs> so I'm standing by for Ethel Merman. Ethel Merman's never off, so I'm never on. For Ethel Merman, are you kidding? Please. Word is out along the Rialto. Word is out on Broadway that Julie Stein and Richard Rodgers are co-producing a revival of Rodgers and Hart's brilliant musical, Pal Joey. And it's opening cold in New York City at the Broadhurst Theater. No out-of-town tryout. I went along and I got an audition for Melba, the newspaper reporter who interviews Pal Joey. And Pal Joey, brat that he is, insults her. And she, in turn, sings a song called Zip by way of letting him know that she has fried fatter fish than he, including the famous striptease artist of the day, Miss Gypsy Rose Lee, whose gimmick it was to present herself as a stripper, yes, but Gypsy Rose Lee presented herself as a highly intellectual, respectable, piss-elegant stripper into the bargain. It was a great part. I read for it, and I got it, and then it hit me. I can't do this. I've got a contract for Leland Hayward standing by for Ethel Merman. Hold it. Wait a minute. Mr. Hayward, I got a part in Pal Joey. Yes, uh, I, I, it opens cold in New York at the, at the Broadhurst Theater. There's no out-of-town tryout. So, Mr. Hayward, if Ethel Merman is off at the Imperial Theater, and that'll be the day, right? Then, and call me madam, then I'd have to be on and call me madam at the Imperial Theater. But if Ethel Merman is on and call me madam at the Imperial Theater, then I could be on in Pal Joey at the Broadhurst Theater. Yes? He said yes. Mr. Stein? 
How Joey opens cold in New York, right at the Broadhurst Theater. There's no out of town tryout. Well, as you know, I've got a, I've got a job uh, standing by. I've got a contract with Lee and Harry standing by for Ethel Merman and call me madam. But uh, Mr. Stein, if uh, if Ethel Merman is off, and that'll be the day, right? <laughs> Imperial Theater. Then, of course, I'd have to be on at the Imperial Theater and call me madam. But if Ethel Merman is on and call me madam at the Imperial Theater, then I could be on in Pal Joey at the Broadhurst Theater. Right? Right! He said, okay. All right, now here we go. The first run through of Pal Joey in New York City. <sighs> Richard Rogers and Julie Stein are not pleased. Company, we need a week in New Haven. Sh Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I used to date a guy at Yale University in New Haven with an MG, and I called him up. I called him up. I called him up and I told him I missed him. And I asked him, I asked him how long it would take to drive from the Imperial Theater in New York to the Schubert Theater in New Haven. Oh my God, I think this is gonna work. You see, I don't sing Zip in Pal Joey until the second act. So I figured if I check with Ethel Merman at half hour, 7.30, at the Imperial Theater in New York, I could be at the Schubert Theater in New Haven by 10 o'clock, right? Right. So here's the deal. The Imperial Theater, New York City, half hour, 7.30, check with Merman. I'm okay, Elaine. All right, so I'm out of there. I'm out of there and I'm off to New Haven in the MG with the ex-boyfriend from Yale. We arrive at New Haven 945, give or take, and I'm out of the MG and onto the stage of the Schubert Theater a few minutes after 10, singing Zip. It's perfect! Perfect! The blizzard of 52. <laughs> It's peak opening night of Pal Joey in New Haven. But I'm not in New Haven. I'm in New York and I'm checking with Merman. And it is snowing. The MG, out of the question. Miss Merman, on account of the blizzard, I have to take the train to New Haven. So, Miss Merman, would it be okay if I, uh, the train pulls out at uh, 7 p.m. from Penn Station? So, would it be okay if I check with you just a little bit earlier than 7 30? And in that way, you see, I could be, oh, Elaine, will you for Christ's sake go to New Haven and sing the I'm on the train at 7 p.m. The train pulls out at 8 p.m. Never mind. I order a double brandy and I start the first decade of my rosary. And that old train, that old train pulls into New Haven and it's what? It's 12 minutes after 10. So that's it for me. That's it. I've had it. I've had it. I sing zip at 10.15 in Pal Joey. And it's 12 minutes after 10. And the line at the cab stand, forget, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold it. I see a private car just about to pull away. Mom and dad in the front seat and four kids in the back. Would you roll your window? Would you roll, roll your window down? Yeah, thank you. I've got to go to the Schubert Theater. I really have to go to the Schubert Theater. And you're going to take me. <laughs> they took me. They took me. I'm in the back seat with the four kids, and I'm making conversation. Uh, how many in your family? Eight. Six in the car, and it turns out her mother and father live with them. What's your name? Giordano. It figures. Look, there will be, there'll be eight tickets at the box office of the Schubert Theater tomorrow night for pal Joey. <sighs> Schubert Theater. I'm out of the car. And I'm through the stage door and up the stairs to upstage left, where I was supposed to have had made my entrance. And as God is my judge, see, it must have been snowing on everybody. As God is my judge, Helen Gallagher is singing the last two lines of her song, which just happens to be my cue to enter. My understudy is standing there, ready to go on in my costume. I've got on a Dior suit and a beaver fur coat and boots. I throw off the coat and I kick off the boots and I say to my understudy with quiet, frenzied desperation, give me your shoes. <laughs> you give me your shoes. I wore a seven, she wore a nine and a half. <laughs> Minnie Mouse in a Dior suit. I made my entrance. I 
have interviewed Pablo Picasso and a countess named DeFrosso. I've interviewed the great Stravinsky. But my greatest achievement was the interview I had with a star who worked for Minsky. I met her at the Yankee Clipper and she didn't unzip one zipper. I said, Miss Lee, you are such an artist. Tell me why you never miss. What do you think of while you work? And she said, while I work, my thoughts go something like this. Zip, Walter Lippmann wasn't brilliant today. Zip, will Saroyan ever write a great play? Zip, I was reading Schopenhauer last night. And I think that Chopin power was right. I don't want to see Zarina. I don't want to meet Kabina. Zip. I'm an intellectual. I don't like a deep contralto or a man whose voice is alto. Zip. I'm a heterosexual. Zip. It took intellect to master my art. Zip. Who the hell is Margie Hart? Schubert Theater, New Haven, New Hartford Railroad, 1205, train to New York City. Day two, Tuesday, half hour, 7.30. Check with Merman. Drive to New Haven. It stopped snowing. Arrive Schubert Theater. 10 o'clock, 10.15, zip. I consider Dolly's paintings passe. The Dior suit stayed in, zip. Will they make the Metropolitan pay? I wore my own shoes, zip. English people don't say clerk. They say Clark A. Giordano's in the third row. Zip. Anybody who says Clark is a jerk. <laughs> Schubert Theater, New Haven, Merritt Parkway, New York. Day three, Wednesday, matinee day, Imperial Theater, half hour, two o'clock, first show, check with Merman. Merritt Parkway, New Haven, Schubert Theater. I adore the great Confucius. And the lines of Luscious Lucius, zip. I am so eclectic. Schubert Theater, New Haven, Merritt Parkway, New York. Second show, half hour, 7.30, check with Merman. Merritt Parkway, New Haven, Schubert Theater. I don't care for either Mickey. Mouse or Rooney makes me sicky, zip. I'm a little hectic. Schubert Theater, New Haven, Merritt Parkway, New York. Day four and five. Thursday and Friday, cool by comparison. Day six, Saturday, another matinee day. Merman, Merritt, New Haven, Schubert, Schubert, New Haven, Merritt, New York. Merman, Merritt, New Haven, Schubert, Schubert, New Haven, Merritt, New York. And you wonder why I drank. Zip. Artistic taste is classic and dear. Zip. Whoa, the hell. Elaine Stritch got an honorary Tony for that. Uh, she was pretty amazing. Cheetah Rivera did the same thing.
kitchen table Everyone could taste me proud Cause she be dancing on the kitchen table Amanda laughing, Carmen appalled Julie yelling, Lola enthralled Mom and Daddy over it all She does sit down She slid down the banisters Climbed up trees <laughs> Straight knees Not bossy, who else? A minimalist A less is more fussy I'd go And he'd say Less cheetah Less cheetah Less cheetah That's it Keep it <laughs> It's a wrap What? It opened up if it swallowed me inside Would my darling baby girl even realized I died You were sitting on a hill with some yippee on your lap Talking love and life and art and that transcendental crap With the dope I'm sure you smoke and a healthy dose of coke up your nose And ah, ma, me You said you had to find yourself so find yourself some other place And don't ah, ma, me I don't need you around to help me complicate my life Capisce? Don't ah, ma, You know, she's now 90. I mean, what an amazing thing. Then, of course, there's Hugh Jackman. I mean, my God, the man could stand and read the phone book. He, too, did a one-month show back on Broadway. It was incredible. I'm trimming my sails In my top hat And my white tie And my tails Oh! Yes! Yeah! Ha! Stepping out with my baby Can't go wrong Cause I'm in black Ask me where will the day be Who can read the phone book? Then there's the creative new musicals, the ones that uh, just took an idea and ran with it. And one of them was William Finn's uh, The Putnam County Spelling Bee, where you had uh, adults playing children from dysfunctional families. Uh, boy, I'll tell you, it was really good. At the 25th annual Putnam County oh. Spelling Bee, 
my parents keep on telling me just being here is winning although i know it isn't so but it's a very nice very very nice very very nice very nice beginning at the 25th annual we memorized the manual about how to spell these words words that require Take your seat. Without further ado, let the spelling begin with Miss Park. Marcy Park has skipped two grades at Our Lady of Intermittent Sorrows. Miss Park, your word is phylactery. Phylactery. Definition, please. It's either of two small square leather boxes that are worn by Jewish men during morning weekday prayers. Sentence, please. Billy put down that phylactery where Episcopalian. P-H-Y-L-A-C-T-E-R-Y, phylactery. That is correct. Mr. Barfy. <sighs> Barfay. Mr. Barfy has a rare mucous membrane disorder. Your word is lugubrious. Oh, yes, of course. Lugubrious. Meaning extremely sad and droopy. More or less, yes. It's a topic I am all too familiar with. One moment, please. Watch this technique. He calls it the magic foot. He's the only one I've ever seen use it. He spells the word out on the floor first so he can get a visual, then speaks it out loud. Lugubrious. L U G U B R I O U S. Lugubrious. That is correct. I know. <laughs> Mr. Sharpton. This fall, Mr. Sharpton will run for class president on a platform of racial equality and macaroni and cheese. <laughs> Your word is dengue. Dengue. Could you give me the definition, please? It's an infectious disease transmitted by mosquitoes and characterized by headache, joint pain, skin rash, and severe diarrhea. Could you use it in a sentence, please? When the pediatrician asked Billy to describe the symptoms of his dengue, he said, it's like there was a race out of my tushy and everybody won. Thank you. D-A-K-N-I-A. You're about one for six. It's D-E-N-G-U-E. That's what I said. <laughs> My friend, you will be missed. But now go with dignity. This ends, but first on our list. You should go with pride. You've been the best.
really, really, really <laughs> clever. Um, Aida, the Elton John musical based upon the opera, uh, it ran for a very long time, and they're talking about a uh, uh, a revival of it. But Avenue Q, the the idea of Sesame Street for adults, really caught everybody's imagination, and um, it, it's just really wonderful. Disappointing. What's the matter? When I was little, I thought I would be what? a big comedian on late night TV. <laughs> oh. But now I'm 32, and as you can see, I'm not. Nope. Oh well. Mm. It sucks to be me. No. It sucks to be me. No. It sucks to be broken, unemployed, and turning 33. It sucks to be me. Well, you think your life sucks? I think so. Your problems aren't so bad. I'm kind of pretty and pretty damn smart. You are. Thanks. I like romantic things like music and art. And as you know, I have a gigantic heart. So why don't I have a boyfriend? It sucks to be me. Me too. It sucks to be me. It sucks to be me. It sucks to be Brian. And to not have a job. Have a it sucks to be me. Come on, it's just ten dollars. I'll pay you back tomorrow. You wanna know what? You leave your clothes out. What? You put your feet on my chair. Oh yeah? You do such anal things like ironing your underwear. <laughs> you make that very small apartment we share. Oh hell. So do you. That's why I'm in hell too. It sucks to be me. No, it sucks to be me. It sucks to be me. It sucks to be me. You think your life sucks? I'm coming to this country for opportunities. Try to work in Korean daddy, but I am Japanese. But with hard work, I earned two master's degrees in social work. And now I am a therapist, but I have no clients. And I have an unemployed fiance, and we have lots of bills to pay. It sucks to be me. for a place to live. You need to talk to the superintendent. Yo, Gary! I'm coming, I'm coming! Oh my God, it's Gary Coleman! Yes, I am! I'm Gary Coleman from TV's Different Strokes. I made a lot of money that got stolen by my folks. Now I'm broke and I'm the butt of everyone's jokes. But I'm here, superintendent, I'm happy you It sucks to be, to be you. you. You win! It sucks to be you. I feel better now. Try having people stopping you to ask you, what you talking about, Willis? It gets old. It sucks, sucks to be you. On Avenue Q. It sucks to be you. On Avenue Q. It sucks to be you. On Avenue Q. It sucks to be you. It sucks to be you. It sucks to be you. When we're together. We're together here on Avenue Q. We live on Avenue Q. Our friends. So clever. <clears throat> it was so clever, it upset Wicked as the Tony Award winning that year, winner that year. The Drowsy Chaperone, another one, based upon a rehearsal dinner skit by a couple of people in Toronto. The idea of a middle-aged, lonely man who listens to old Broadway records and the musical comes alive uh, in his apartment. Uh, on. And above all, uh, I thank Alan Bennett. Uh, over the past few years, we've done uh, four plays and two movies together, and he is the best luck I've ever had. Thank you very much. He said thank you. Mm. I suppose I should have chosen a less popular phrase. It's a little drinking game. I... Anyway, hello. 
How are we this evening? Good. I'm feeling a little blue myself. Whenever I'm feeling this way, blue, I like to listen to my music. So I was going through my records this morning, and what did I find? But my favorite show, The Drowsy Chaperone. Oh, good, you know it. 1928. Let me read to you what it says in the back. Mix-ups, mayhem, and a gay wedding. Well, of course, the phrase gay wedding has a different meaning now, but... But back then, it just meant fun. And that's all this show is, fun. Oh, I love playing my records. It's as if the musicals come to life in my apartment. Oh, this is one of my favorite songs. It's called Show Off. In it, the bride, the glamorous Janet Vandegraaff, entertains questions from reporters as she lounges by the pool. Miss Vandegraaff, is it true you're giving up a successful career to marry a man on the stage? Yes. So you won't be returning to the stage ever? I shan't. I shan't. You shan't? I, I shan't. shan't. I have a question. How can you give up the footlights when you know very well you got grease paint in your veins? Oh, Victor, if you think this is about vanity, you couldn't be more wrong. I don't want to show off no more. I don't want to sing tunes no more. I don't want to ride no No more. I don't want to show off. Janet, please. Don't try to control me. I've made up my mind. And that's it. I quit. I'm leaving it all behind. I don't want to be cute no more. Make the gentleman hoot no more.
Well, I hope that was fun today as we enjoyed some of the things that, uh, uh, yeah, that was the original production of Drowsy Chaperone with Sutton Foster. Um, you know, we're going to continue, you know, down the path. I look forward to sharing some of the things that uh, uh, were current in the new uh, century, I guess. Uh, I do want to remind everybody we have Camelot tickets uh, for April 2nd. And I hope you all saw the reviews of uh, uh, Kimberly Akimbo this morning in the paper. Uh, what a really terrific show. And uh, we're going to enjoy seeing it for those of you who are going with us in um, uh, January. I'm just looking to see very quickly uh, what the chat questions were. Uh, yes, it is the original production. Um, one of the reasons Broadway shows close is falling ticket sales, obviously, uh, and not being able to guarantee the rent minimum that the producers promise uh, to the theaters where the shows are rented. Or sometimes uh, it's meant to be a limited run, uh, like with Hugh Jackman and Sutton Foster and The Music Man, uh, nobody's willing to replace you. And, uh, you know, sometimes you just go with the leading people you have and you, you hope that you're going to make the money you need. Well, I hope everybody had a fun morning today. And I look forward to seeing you all next Friday as usual. Take care. <laughs>